there's something about making bread that is really wholesome and good. It is something that you can not only enjoy yourself, but you can share. You can give it to friends or neighbors or family. It's just a good thing to learn how to make. And initially it can be really intimidating, but it's actually not with a Dutch oven, a cast iron Dutch oven. It makes the whole process extremely easy. And then you are allowed to have fresh bread every day for relatively cheap. So I got this Lodge cast iron Dutch oven. The 10 on the lid means 10 inches diameter. It is a shallow cast iron pot and uh, the deeper pots are meant more for like stews and meats and things. The shallower ones are, are good for bread and desserts. And I got the Lodge brand because Lodge is an American company. You can be sure that there aren't any sort of iron impurities in it. The uh, quality of the casting is good. There aren't divots in there. There's a little bit of play in the lid, but that is normal. And the uh, I got the cast iron pot with the legs attached. And that is to allow you to be able to use this out on a campfire. And that allows even distribution of heat underneath. What I like about the Lodge is that it comes with this, uh, this good little pamphlet that talks all about the history of the oven, um, different types of ovens, and how they are all used for different purposes, how to use them correctly out on a campfire or with different coals. Uh, there it talks about even spacing of coals and how many coals to use both on top and bottom to get what kind of temperature. It's even including a bunch of different recipes. So today we're going to be making cinnamon raisin bread. I start with about two and a half cups of bread flour and uh, you can fluctuate it a little bit. You can go up to three cups if you want and that'll fit fine in this size of pan. Then I use uh, two teaspoons of salt and it's not table salt. It's kind of the, uh, the rock chunky salt or the kosher salt. Um, if you're making okay. cinnamon raisin bread, about one cup of brown sugar. One packet of the rapid rise yeast that measures about two and a half teaspoons and about one cup of raisins. You can add or take out raisins how you like. A bunch of ground cinnamon, however much you want. Stir all these dry ingredients up really well until it's all evenly distributed. Next, add warm water, about one and a half, maybe two cups of warm water, depending on how much flour you have. And this is why you don't have to be absolutely precise in your flour because you can add enough water to adjust to the amount of flour. Stir it up really well until it's good and sticky. You don't want it to the point where you're able to knead it because this is no knead dough, but you do want it fairly sticky and evenly textured throughout. Cover the bowl with clear plastic wrap. Make a nice airtight seal. Okay. Then set the bowl somewhere where it's warm. The warmer that it is, the faster the dough will rise. You can set it next to a wood stove or some area of heat and allow it to rise for at least two hours, preferably close to three hours. After it's risen, set the oven to 400 degrees and put the Dutch oven in the oven for about 30 minutes to preheat. Spread a little bit of flour out onto a table and the consistency of the risen dough should be kind of like pudding. When you scrape it out, it should be relatively sticky like this. And then dump it out onto the table with flour. Next, you fold over the dough several times. Next, take a sheet of baking parchment paper and transfer this over to the parchment paper. Now take the Dutch oven out of the oven, put it on some hot pads take the lid off and transfer the dough with the parchment paper into the Dutch oven. Just drop it right in. 
Be sure you don't touch your hands to the sides of the Dutch oven. It's extremely hot. Put the lid back on. It's okay to have some of the paper sticking out. And then put it back into the oven right away. After 30 minutes, you take the lid off and bake it again for about another nine or 10 minutes. Like this example of white bread. The longer you bake it with the lid off, the crustier the surface of the bread will be. Now transfer the bread onto a rack and let it cool for about 10 minutes. You're able to now break it open and the inside will still be nice and warm. And this is the perfect time to eat it. Now, when you're done with your Dutch oven, you can wipe it out, but then put a layer of vegetable oil around the entire thing. The reason you use vegetable oil instead of olive oil is because vegetable oil can tolerate a higher temperature than olive oil. Thin layer over everything, including the lid and all of the little nooks and crannies. That will prevent any sort of rusting and keep the surface fairly non-stick. When you store it, Fold up some paper towels before you put the lid on. That allows a little bit of air circulation. If you like this video, go ahead and share and subscribe. I will put all the links to the Dutch oven and a few of the other things used in this video in the description below. Thanks for watching.